the Blackmagic Ursa Mini Pro. I am shooketh. Man, talk about a camera. This is how we do. do it. What's up everybody, it's Shane here, waiting to be seen, and I welcome you to today's video. Today, this very day, Blackmagic Design have done what they quite often do, they announce some new kit, but what the kit is has really got people talking. They're so, so excited for a number of reasons. And if you're involved in video, specifically, I think, television or perhaps film, then this camera is going to be a real game changer. I'm sure of it. So what I wanted to do was have a look at some of the specs with you guys and just uh, have a bit of a, of a react to those things because there are some things in there that I'm just going, are you... Are you kidding me? For those who know me, you know that for most of my video content, I'm using a Sony a7 III and I love my a7 III. I'm not going to rag on that. It is a fun little full frame censored camera and I love it, I really do. But there are limitations to it. One of those is the amount of color that it can produce. And by that, I mean it's an 8-bit camera. And internally, it records at uh, 420. If you plug in an external recorder, it will give you 422, which is great, but it's still only working in an 8-bit color space. 8-bit colors are dealing with the red, the blue, and the green, and it allows the camera to be able to see 255 shades in each of those. Effectively, our cameras can see 16.8 million colors, I think it is. If you have a 10-bit camera, that's the next step up. Each one of those uh, colors, red, blue, and green, can see 1,024 shades. So suddenly you go from 16.8 million shades that your camera can digitally capture to a little bit over 1 billion. Well, the very first thing that I personally noticed about the new Blackmagic Ursa Mini, and this is it here, it's introducing the world's most advanced digital camera. It is using a 12-bit color space. Let me just get the figures because this is mind blowing. Going from 10 bit to 12 bit, let me get this right for you. You go from 1024 to 4096. 4096 shades of red, blue, and green. I think that at that, at that level, banding, there is no such thing. It, it would have to be as close to a film visual that you could get in digital space, surely, because that, so you go from a billion to 68 billion colors. 68 billion colors. Just, whew, I'm shook. I am shooketh. <laughs> Seriously, that, that is insane. This camera is just for that alone, for that alone would be game changing. And, and that's with the Blackmagic RAW capture, which captures in 422. That is some serious color space for people to be able to film and play around with. If you're capturing some stills, it's an 80 megapixel still shot. That's huge. 12K, that's 12,288 by 6,480. Oh, dude, it makes my head hurt. Let's have a look at some of these other things because this is, it really is. It's got the cinematic world a buzz right now and and I'm really excited to be able to share what is my first video for a couple of weeks because just as an aside I'm expecting a baby and so baby should be turning up almost any day now hopefully <laughs> to come back today and to go wow this is happening right now to be able to talk about it right now is amazing synergy for my channel so woo, thank you BMD let's have a look at some of these other things man the pocket cinema camera or the cinema camera has 13 stops a dynamic range which makes a really big difference when you're color grading if you're recording in raw in a flat profile from your darkest dark to your brightest bright there's 13 stops of range that it's captured this camera has 14 stops of dynamic range and it's going to be running with a native iso of 800 so it, it will be it ought to be able to handle low light fairly well if, if that's the kind of baseline that it's got. 
like the other Ursas, it's interchangeable lenses. It's using a PL mount, so so it means that you can have a full range of uh, of cinematic lenses. Of course, with any camera like this, that I think is actually the biggest challenge: is getting a lens that can give you the most out of the sensor that's inside. So, a lot of uh, a lot of cameras that are using a 4K sensor or even a 6K. Uh, equivalent sensor, they don't seem to look quite as nice as they possibly could because you don't have a lens that's giving that sensor all of the information that it can possibly capture. So it can sometimes look a little bit underwhelming compared to say a, a, an Ari or an Alexa that's capturing HD with a cinema lens that's designed for HD. Those things look mwah, beautiful. It's just something that needs to be considered. Are there lenses that can actually get the most out of a camera like this? I guess time will tell. I'm just thinking about this laptop here. This one is already two years old. It edits 4K, but it chugs a little bit. And, and that's with an i7 processor. It's with a GTX 1070 graphics card. It's with 32 gig of RAM. So it's not as though it's a slouchy laptop. It's a gaming laptop, but it, it renders pretty well. This laptop over here, this one's a new one. It's the i7 10th gen. It actually has the RTX uh, 2060 graphics card in it and it has 64 gig of RAM and so it's going to be able to handle 4k like that but I don't think that this is going to handle I don't think this is going to handle 12k editing it might handle 8k 12 like could you imagine that editing machine can seriously can you imagine that editing machine how specked out would that have to be that would have to have all the bells and whistles Oof, certainly not for the average punter, the average YouTuber. That's what I said at the top. I think this is uh, probably going to be a, a real game changer in film and in television space. One thing that I've noticed in Australia is that um, is that the, the Alexa and the Ari name brands are ubiquitous. They are the go-to. So this has to do an awful lot to bust into that space. No way. Guys, this this blows me away. I've used my phone, which shoots in 4K. I use this app, it's called Filmic Pro, and it gets the most out of your phone's camera. It, it's like full professional settings. I was able, through Filmic Pro, to be able to capture HD footage at 120 frames a second. So you get that nice, smooth, buttery slow-mo. You know the stuff I'm talking about, the stuff that Peter McKinnon's and, and Casey Neistat's love to use as B-roll. So the 12K will record up to 60 frames a second. So, so already that, that's a reasonable slow-mo. If, you, if, if your project is, is in 30 frames a second, then that's half speed already in 12K. Like, are you kidding me? If you stop that down to use the 8K, then you can shoot up to 110 frames a second. And if you stop it down to record in 4K, you can shoot up to 220 frames a second. Let me say that again. 220 frames a second in 4K. <sighs> oh, man, I got chill. I, I just literally got chills. So the color space that it can play with, in addition to being able to film at such frame rates, how, how can this camera not be considered a game changer? It, like, oh man. And there's so much more to go through. Uncompressed will record at 2.8 gig a second. Just so you know, uh, I'll just let that sink in. 2.8 gig a second. Obviously, if you're recording in 12K, you're going to have to have a mountain of storage space. Like, that's ridiculous. But that's, that is what it is. That's, that's the space. If you're, if you're capturing 12-bit footage and, you know, it's, it's covering so many pixels, of course the file size is going to be huge. That's just the nature of the beast. 
And you know what? That's it. I'm not going to I'm not going to dive into anything else because there's going to be plenty of other people out there that are going to go into the full details, into the full information, and go into real specific technical drill down. I just wanted to say, man, this has got me excited even though I'm probably personally never going to use this camera, but I can appreciate what's gone into it. And I just wanted to share that excitement with you today because it is news, hot off the press from Black Magic Design today. So yeah, it's so, so cool. Dude, USB-C for direct recording to an external disc. <laughs> Seriously, so I, I need to stop. Thank you so much for stopping by. I hope that you've enjoyed today's reaction video to the news that Blackmagic have released the Ursa Mini Pro 12K. If you've enjoyed today's video, please give me a thumbs up down below. If you think that the other content on Waiting to be Seen might be of use to you, then consider subscribing. You know the drill, you just have to click on that big red subscribe button down below, click on the notification bell right alongside that and YouTube are gonna do the rest. They will let you know as soon as my latest content is available. And I love that, they make it so easy. I'm all done for today, as shook as I, I, I really, that kind of incorrect grammar irks me, but you know, I'm trying to be cool for the kids. It shook me, you know? I don't want to be salty about it. <laughs> Stop, Shane. Stop. I hope you have a fantastic Friday. I hope that the weekend's going to be fantastic for you as well. And the week to come is going to be a really, really good one. I know it's going to be for me because I'm going to become a daddy. Yeah. Hope to see you guys next time. Bye. That's going to leave a mark. What?